Hey, looks like we're live. Hey, I think we got <laughs> it. Uh, I'll just I'll babble a little bit here while people are unmuting and and logging in and everything. But uh, thanks for joining us. We're uh, going to talk local music here for on behalf of the Minnesota History Center, and uh, this was set up to promote the, uh, the the First Avenue exhibit at at the Minnesota History Center. Uh, Minnesota Historical Society had kept that up for, they reopened it again this summer. It was up last year. It was kind of all timed to First Avenue's 50th anniversary, which, uh, you know, other things got in the way. But uh, th then, the, then the exhibit reopened. And so this was gonna kind of be a last call for the exhibit, uh, which I hope everyone who's who's logging in here saw because it was it was really a wonderful moving exhibit. It was, for those who don't know, I wrote, book on First Avenue, which through the Minnesota Historical Society Press, which uh, the exhibit was, you know, keyed off of. Um, so we were going to talk, you know, more First Avenue stuff. We, ha we have Ashley here from, from First Avenue. We certainly will we'll do that, but we're, we're expanding it to a broader conversation on the local music scene and um, sort of like, uh, welcome to tonight's episode of uh, Hell, and, or, or maybe we'll, we'll say tonight's episode of Jeopardy. We'll keep, you know, something like that. I don't know. So, but I'll I'll quickly introduce everyone. I, oh, I should should shout out the uh, underwriter here, the, the folks that uh, gave the Historical Society money to to do all this. It's uh, the Marnie and Conley Brooks Fund. Uh, I should also say that the First Avenue exhibit there's there's a chance it could reopen. It's due to close, and then and then of course now there's the government the governor's shutdown of everything. Um, because nobody's wearing masks, it might reopen, but may probably not. So, in, a, in other words, they they during the lockdown they put a lot of the exhibit online at the Minnesota Historical Society website. Really cool stuff to check out. I, I really urge you to do that and and uh, look at all the great things the Historical Society does. Okay, let's go on to our wonderful panel tonight. Uh, these these I, you know these are just some of the hardest working people in town. Uh, we've got uh, I don't know if they're the same. Is on your screen, but above me, uh, we could, let's do the the Brady Bunch thing. Actually, wait. Uh, okay, uh, I'll, I'll yeah. the right spot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ashley Ryan is the the marketing director at First Avenue. Um, she's also been heavily involved in the um, in NEVA, which is the uh, uh, National Independent Venues Association. The Save, Save Our Stages hashtag, which. Uh, Dana Frank, the owner of First Avenue, is, is, is the president of, and not just helping venues locally, helping venues around the country, around the world, actually. Right, Ashley? There's, it's yeah. at this point. Yeah. yeah, I mean, NEVA is, is, you know, a sort of a U.S.-based organization, but yeah, we're, I mean, we care about independent venues everywhere, really. Yeah, yeah, no, and they're doing great work. We'll talk, we'll talk more about that. Uh, over in this corner, at least on mine, <laughs> Is uh, the great Molly Mayer? Uh, Molly is uh, Molly is there. She's. I think I actually did not. What was it? I used a, a Jill of all trades. I used the line <laughs> a lot because uh, Mo Molly, uh, probably best known as just one of the most gifted musicians in town. She's just a. She's a guitarist and she's a, she's a wonderful singer songwriter. Uh, behind the scenes, she's also does a lot of uh, music booking. She was. Uh, uh, booking the Lower Town Guitar Festival in St. Paul, a really cool festival. Uh, you were booking at the Como Pavilion. You did some booking at Hook and Ladder. Uh, am I forgetting something, Molly? That's about, that's about right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, and Molly's just a, a just super well connected in town. So we're, we're happy to have you too, Molly. Thank you. And, and this way, we've we've got the incomparable uh, Matt Nerdy Allen. Yeah. Uh, this uh, Matt was uh, nerdy was was blowing up this year. Uh, he, the, uh, we, we were talking before we went live that if we were to pinpoint uh, one of the best moments of the year for for me personally, it would be ner the nerdy show. It was the, the First Avenue's best best new bands showcase, and he topped it off full full band and and dancers and I mean it was. It, truly a joyous occasion and, and it, it it almost it's such a sharp contrast to the way this sucky ass <laughs> <laughs> oh no we were real confident we were real confident at the time yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, no, it was great. And you guys had a, you, you rolled into a, a fine line show after that, that I think was sold out or close to it. And that, that never got to happen. Um, so, uh, so thanks for joining us as well, Matt. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I was going to, uh, start with on an upbeat note. Uh, I was kind of hoping just, just like I was talking about, uh, seeing the, the nerdy show at, at first have all the if you guys could pinpoint one happy moment this year the, the one moment where you really kind of had hope you really thought you know this sucks but we're going to pull through this uh ashley you started did you did you have one key moment that things really brightened for you during all this yeah um i live across the street like directly across the street from the 331 uh, oh, yeah. So uh, I have benefited greatly from the band on a van uh, happening. It's and, and Matt Nerdy, I saw you, and I mean, I every week it was something to look forward to. But the first night it happened, um, my husband James, who's actually a talent buyer, he's a booker here at First Avenue. Um, he and I turned to each other and we're like, "That's live music." There's like music <laughs> yeah. spirit coming in from outside. And we're like, oh my God. And I was like, no, that is amplified sound. What's happening? <laughs> and we, we ran downstairs and we grabbed chairs from our from our fire pit and like set up chairs on the sidewalk. And I, we both kind of had teared up a little bit. And it was um, hearing live music sort of for the first time. And but by surprise, like we didn't know. It was a really incredible moment. Yeah. Yeah. And and ner nerdy was was one of the acts on that. And, yes, and it was fantastic. And I think yeah. you were the first of the uh, band on a van that I saw an encore, like a real encore. <laughs> yes, like, like the crowd was not done. They were. That like, was why. It was. Do, awesome. another, do another song, or we're tipping this damn. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, they, they definitely could have. They definitely could have. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. great. No, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Matt, what, what was your uh, one? Yo. Step? I would say that honestly, there was a lot of wonderful musical things. I I'm gonna say for me, one of my the biggest things was getting the getting the call from Paisley Park to do a live stream show from them. Um, as a, just like a Minnesota kid, you know, and oh, in, in the music scene, like that was it was like a, the president called. You know what I mean? It was just like it was not this president, but a president. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, holy buck, it's me? And they were like, yeah. And getting to get all that, all of that set up and doing the whole thing, that honestly, I would never have thought that was something I'd be able to do. And it was really, really wonderful. So just yeah, having that time, getting to bring, you know, my DJ, my background singer, and for just to do music for such a prestigious group was like, ah, it was super cool. Yeah, yeah. No, it was, it turned out really well too. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Molly, what was your big bright moment? Um, I gotta say the other night with Curtis A. That was, yeah. um, I kind of, I was really excited about the band on a van. I never went to go see those. I would always see the footage later, but um, that was like the first stream was the Curtis A thing um, the other night. And uh, yeah, brought tears to my eyes. And it was like, I had forgotten just how much I was missing it and, and seeing yeah. First Avenue and the lights, cause it's just, it's in, you know, you know what it is, you know the space when you see it lit up. Yeah. Um, so that was, uh, and yeah, that you was know, huge. You know, Kurt, when he's lit up too? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, no, it was, it was beautiful and, and uh, yeah, no. My, my moment was, uh, and I got to see this in person was when the, the, the first of the hook stream live stream shows at hook and ladder um, was Davina and the vagabonds Davina and her husband trumpeter Zach live just a couple blocks from there. Uh, and the, the hook and ladder is, was, is right next to the third precinct, what used to be the third precinct building uh, in, in the heart of things of, Lake Street, and this was only a few weeks after. It's a it's a miracle the venue survived, and then and then Davina put on just you know it was you know they they're real New Orleansy, and as Molly who spent a lot of time in New Orleans knows, you know it's just this beautiful uplifting vibe of kind of rebirth really. So that that was my my moment, and the Hook and Lantern did go on to 
put on a lot of excellent live streams after that too. And they're, they're still going as we're going to have a long winter. Uh, <laughs> you, let, let me ask you musicians. Did you, um, and, and Matt, you in particular, uh, you, there were a lot of nerdy live streaming events, especially early on. You were all over the place. Yeah. yeah. Did, is that, was it worth it? Is it, did anything come of those? Honestly, yes. I, I can't, uh, I can't stress how much that was important. Like for that, mm -hmm. so, so we were scheduled to play the opening for the Minnesota United soccer game. And so we were like, Oh God, this is going to be really dope. This is our year. You know, we just came off of the first half thing. And, um, once we got the call that everything was going to cancel and it all kind of happened within the same week. Yeah. I realized to myself, I was like, oh, all right. Well, we're going to either just lay down and not do anything or we're going to have to do something. And I, we, I, I called my DJ and I was like, we're going to do live stream shows. How? Not quite sure. Where? Not really. I'm not really. My apartment. Like, we'll figure it yeah. out. And then that first uh, nerdy world tour, the quarantine world tour that really started everything for me was just us figuring it out as we went along. We were literally just looking things up online. How would you do this? How do you make the sound sound good? You know, our neighbors were yeah. super cool, which was really nice. And it worked like it worked out. People were listening and tuning in and really, and then we got to donate. People were donating money for uh, MN artist relief, Minnesota artist relief. So we were like handing out money to like the local artists. Like, Hey, here's some money, pay your bills, do whatever you can. It was a really, it really did work out. And especially in that first couple months, it was just like, wow, 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 wow. Nice. Nice. Molly, you did a little bit of live streaming or. or you... um, I, I did a couple did of video. Like, yeah, pre-recorded. I yeah. Um, was fortunate enough to spend a lot of the summer um, out on a cabin outside of Ely, and so the internet is non-existent. So I would just I would just do um, some pre-recorded stuff, and uh, that was great. I, I enjoyed that more. I thought about doing some live streaming, but um, I wasn't as ambitious as nerdy, like to look things up online and how is it going to sound good. Um, so I just, and, and I kind of didn't feel like maybe my voice needed to be heard during all this, this, um, this time. So I was just, was like, I'm just going to give it space. So just did a couple of pre-records and, and that was great too. I got to collaborate with some people that, um, I wanted to, and I didn't, I wouldn't have had a chance to do so probably otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then, then you two, let me ask you, you both put out albums this year, um, Molly's album came out earlier in the year. Uh, just a, a beautiful record. I'm not saying that because he's here, because she's here. It's uh, called Follow. It's uh, you guys look it up. It's it's got a great, just these really cool guitar grooves on there, kind of Ry Cooter and Los Lobos. -y. But but and also her 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 beautiful singing and songwriting on top of it. Um, and then and then Matt uh, Matt Matt, you put out there were a couple nerdy singles. Mm -hmm. and, and then you put out a, a full blown uh, album towards the end of the year yeah. uh, called called Thirty Eighth, which is you can probably figure from the title is was really a reaction to, uh, you know, the George Floyd tragedy and all, and all the turmoil that that followed it, especially locally. And Matt was was front and center for a lot of that. You you were uh, manning a, a first aid station. Right. During, during the riots and, and got got injured a little bit yourself and certainly saw some bad bad stuff um put, let's just stick to the records because we could talk about that for for years um or we will be talking about it for years uh um putting a record on this year i mean how how hard was it how for people that artists that might be putting out records and then Coming months when they can't pr promote them with shows, mm -hmm. less any lessons learned. Just kind of tell me about your experiences doing putting out these great records. Um, well, I'll start, Matt. Uh, for me, it was uh, we had talked about trying to do a streaming thing at the Hook and Ladder, but um, this record was such a departure from what we've done in the past that for us to even try to rehearse to do the songs live, it just didn't seem like. Um, it was feasible. And then with the murder of George Floyd, it just didn't seem like it was relevant. Um, 
So I just wanted to just take time to let other voices be heard. Um, but but what did what the good that came out of it was um, for me like I don't do um, I don't do crowdfunding before the record, so I hadn't paid for the manufacturing of the record. So people really did step up and bought so many copies of it that I was actually able to pay for my records. Um, so that was really helpful. People were so generous. Um, so that was great because that's the best way to support an artist is by buying their merch, right? Just straight to them, which was, yeah, yeah just right out of my living room. Um, but when you put out a record, for me, especially the timing, you know, putting it out in the spring or, or late winter, you're, for me, I'm hoping that it's going to promote me for festivals and kind of get my name floating to the top for some uh, more high profile gigs. And, you know, that's what helps perpetuate um, the business. And yeah. so that was that part, you know, it took a hit there, um, but everybody did. So, uh, you know, it was a challenge, but um, this is just, this is the, I mean, this is what we're bred to do is to figure it out, right? And to, um, uh, pivot and come up with so what's the next thing which i'm still trying to figure out <laughs> yeah yeah everyone is everyone. yo that's so real no really about like people stepping up like the generosity of people of fans and of, of, of supporters of local music um and just music in general it's like been staggering at points i've been like wow everyone's everyone's getting hurt right now but like still people have the time to do that and i think cannot be stated how much how important that is um for me it was really interesting because 38th it, it was again like molly was saying like it's very different than a lot of the other stuff i had put out recently you know mm -hmm. um just even from you know content tone the whole the whole bit it was very different so for me i was like oh i i was oh i almost felt a little good that i didn't have to do a whole show for it so then people wouldn't be like <laughs> looking at me with their eyes wide like this the whole time so i felt a little bit of like a, like a, a selfish little bit of like okay i'm a little bit safe everyone's at home and listening to it but at the same time it was weird you usually do a concert you usually do you it's a whole thing you get everybody you get the you get the bill together you get it all set up you might have like particular merch for that so it was a little weird i did a release stream and it was just like my friends like on zoom and a couple people that i that i was like oh maybe you can listen to this and it was very it was very like personal which was good for the record it made it let me say a little bit more than I, what that i would have wanted to say um but yeah it was strange putting out a record in this year but it ultimately worked out 38th it was well received and, and people were really liking it but then you kind of miss being able to perform it live mm -hmm. like i think we've maybe done one of these songs live stream because with my whole band which is 10 people total like we don't have a practice space we don't have a place where we can go and perform we don't have a place where we all get together and then we have features on the album and then it's like where are they at how are they feeling how is everything going can the studio get us in like is everyone feeling all right and so it's just like it took a lot longer than i think it would even have normally taken to get it done so if you're an artist and you're doing that just don't give yourself a hard this will be when it's finished time. Let yourself breathe. Your work will come out when it comes out. That would be like my biggest like thing if you're making something now. Sure, sure. Yeah, and I, I certainly hope we get to hear uh, some of that stuff live uh, whenever. Uh, well, although you're so prolific, you'll probably have two more albums. <laughs> but, I'm trying. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, and that's that's a good good segue to, to Ashley. Ashley, when is live music coming back? Please, Ashley, tell us. Chris Avenue's in charge of that. Let me just put Bring my, it back. my crystal yeah. ball over here and figure it out yeah. for everybody. <laughs> um, you know, we the the vaccine is incredibly good news. Um, we've seen sort of an uptick of sort of agents re like really seriously wanting to know what availability we have, um, but. It won't be this winter. It won't be this spring. You know, it's yeah. we'll likely see people doing some outdoor stuff, of course, in the summer. And the hope is for the fall. 
which sounds, you know, really crazy still. Um, but we have to get to a point where crowds are possible and, you know, we're just, we're not there right now. Absolutely. So every, I think everyone's really looking confidently though into next year. Like we're seeing other countries, you know, and, and obviously countries that maybe um, are a little bit smaller or have like more you know, like islands or border control where like they really could lock down um, opening back up and seeing a lot of progress. So that's of course really, really encouraging too, but yeah, it'll be, you know, fingers crossed. It'll be next year. Yeah. yeah. It, you know, yeah, Matt, Matt and Molly, you guys book your New Zealand tour as soon as you can. Yeah. Yo, <laughs> I, actually had somebody, I had somebody hit me up from New Zealand. I'm not, no, no joke. <laughs> They're like, oh, you should come out here and do like some festivals. And I was like, if okay. I don't think they're letting us in, I don't know what the rules are out there. Yeah. <laughs> don't tempt me. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Right. Yeah. Um, Ashley, what what has it been like at First Avenue during this? I mean, is it what is kind of the state of things there? Yeah, it's it's been quieter than it has ever been here. You know, things have when we shut. Um, like everybody, there was sort of a, the expectation or thought that it was like, well, it, you know, in a couple of weeks, we'll, it, we'll lock down and everything will sort of be under control. And, and this sucks. We're going to have to move all of our shows right now into the summer, you know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then it was like, oh, we've got to move all of these shows into the fall, like fingers crossed. And then it was like, uh, you know, so then now it's, it, it was, um, uh, you know, what it's been like sort of since then is the realization of having to pivot, like Molly said, which is what everyone's having to do and, and just think about things in a little bit of a different way. And, and you know, think about, I, I think also to echo Molly, like there were ways that we felt like we could continue sort of like being here for the community, not as the space that people gather uh at but as a place that could still be sharing you know like in our newsletters me like music news but information about what was happening here in our city information about you know how you can stay safe and get tested for covid i mean we just we tried to offer other things to keep engaged you know with the community and yeah. and you know i didn't you know, think yeah sorry no go ahead. i have to say ashley like those newsletters have really felt like a beacon when I get my, my weekly first Ave newsletter, yeah. because it is, you guys were going beyond, you're not just a venue. I mean, mm -hmm. First Avenue is, yeah, is a beacon. And I have to say as just a community member, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was great to see that. Yeah. You can go get tested and just keeping up to date, not just with music, but just as this is, yeah, you, you guys are a, a cornerstone of the community. I think it was as a, as an artist, a young artist, especially like seeing that first half wasn't just being quiet. Yeah. Kept people just being like, okay, like, Everything's shut down. Everything's around. Everything's going away. But first half still talking to us, even if it's not music. They're yeah. still here because, like, heaven forbid, like that. And that's everyone's thought. Like, all right, it's like it's the lighthouse in this whole thing. We're just like, yo, as long as the light keeps going, we can. We're 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 all right. We're all right. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. I think that's those are great points. I mean, and you know, so for us, it was we we were quiet here but we knew we exactly that we like we knew we couldn't just be quiet outwardly so that's you know yeah. that's sort of what it's been like yeah and it yeah i mean talk about uh setting the right tone for for things in town i mean the, you know first have at, at first avenue owns the turf club mm -hmm. the turf club was greatly damaged in the in the riots along uh university avenue yep. uh, and and uh, Dana Frank, the owner's comment was, you know, we'll, we're fine. We'll, we'll get, you know, we got it. We'll get through this. It's the more important thing is what happened with George Floyd. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought that was, that was quite, quite something. Yeah. Um, so, Cause it, the club really was damaged and it's still, still under repair the turf, turf club. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, maybe we should also bring up uh, first Avenue's <clears throat> instrumental on in the twin cities music community trust. Uh, which which people have donated to and can still donate to, and you guys are selling merch to benefit the Music Community Trust. Uh, yeah. 
which which goes it's kind of a, a relief fund for for uh, musicians and but all, but also uh, music venue employees in town. Uh, and did, I know did, did a lot of good so so far, and it was a great cause. Anyone looking for a good cause at the end of the year, along with just supporting music outright, that's that, that was a great organization. Um, and then and then Neva uh, Ashley um, kind kind of just tell us how it re can recount to us how this came together and, and, and where things stand with, with NEVA. Well, so NEVA is the National Independent Venue Association. And in our naive early weeks, when we all thought, oh, we're gonna be closed for, for a couple of weeks, uh, you know, all of the all of the people in the this independent venue sort of world started talking to each other and going, what, what are you doing? What are we doing? What's, what's happening? And it really quickly, um, became apparent or obvious to us that it was not going to be a couple of weeks and that this was going to be a long-term massive shutdown and and that we as venues would be really truly like the first to close and the last to open because like I said it's like where do crowds gather you know mm -hmm. in, in clubs and and at rock and roll shows so we thought we have to do more and Dana the owner of First Avenue was really involved in those early, early conversations with venue owners and promoters um, from around the country. And the realization that we weren't going to be able to make it if there wasn't action and sort of assistance from the government was pretty clear. Um, so that's sort of how Neva came to form. We have had incredible support it was like a i mean talk about like a grassroots effort it's like a bunch of music venues around the country going can you write your senator can you just tell him that you really yeah. love live music it could like maybe just that would be great um yeah. and we've had like over two million messages sent which you know we we went from being not even an organization to having um the save our stages act and that is only because people care and people mm -hmm. made their voices heard and, and said, hey, there's this whole industry here that's going to just disappear if we don't do something about it. Um, so now we're, we're, you know, like the rest of the country waiting for this next sort of package to come out. But we're very hopeful that the Save Our Stages Act and, and elements of it will, will be included. Um, and really what that would be is like a lifeline for venues. There's so many venues around the country that have closed already. Yeah. Um, and we, you know, we just, we're trying to do everything we can so that we don't see more of that. And the winter is, is going to be really tough on a lot of venues. So yeah. that would, you know, that would be uh, a quick summation of, of what Neva's doing and what they've been up to. But if you, you know, if you're watching this, if you're tuned in, I would say, you haven't sent a letter yet you can go to saveourstages.com and do that and we're you know i think right now we're just really trying to push for we need some action the bill is out there like you know we need we need congress to do something with it yeah yeah well i should we should say uh, locally amy klobuchar has been a really really good advocate for it amy klobuchar has been yes yeah, senator klobuchar has been an incredible advocate um she, I think, really understands that live music and, and Minnesota and the Twin Cities are just like inherently hand in hand. Um, yeah. You know, those things, one without the other doesn't even seem possible to me. So I think yeah. she gets that and she she has been a champion for us, definitely. Sure, sure. Yeah, well, and, but it's it's uh, bipartisan too because uh, mm -hmm. John Cornyn from year, years of my former state, Texas, yep. is a, he was a supporter of it too. So yeah, it's it's. I mean, here's the thing: like, who doesn't like music, right? Yeah, like, yeah, you, yeah, you, sure. Everybody can think of a favorite band. You know, everyone has a favorite song, and so it really can be something that we can find common ground, and that's something to be thankful for in this year. Yeah, it really is kind of amazing. It, happily, so that I, we haven't lost any venues in we, we, Honey. Did close. Closed, yeah. uh, can Can uh, Wonderland as well. Can Can Wonderland. Yeah. Yeah. A oh, lot of sure, sure. Yeah. 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 It's um, tough, right? Yeah. But but fortunately all, all of our um 
you know, I, I'd say our mainstays are, are holding strong. Yeah. It's, but um, it's going to be a long winter. It's going to be a long winter. I should mention, too, there's a really great chapter of Minnesota. It's called Miniva, but the Minnesota Independent Venue Association. And, you know, so pretty much any room that you can think of, you know, is involved in that, too. And um, there are a lot of people here locally from the venues just doing kind of hard, thankless work, trying mm -hmm. to make sure and support each other and, and kind of sure. you know, build morale. So. Promoters too, uh, Sue McLean and Associates. Promoters, yep, yeah. Mm -hmm. The the folks at Sue McLean have been integral in that. Uh, you know, I think it's promoters and venues. You know, it's a very symbiotic relationship. So yeah, yeah. Uh, well, let's kind of circle back to the other. Uh, well, and, and by the way, uh, folks viewing in, we can uh, you can shoot uh, somewhere in there. Way to shoot us messages or questions if you want. We'll, we'll try to answer them. Uh, let's kind of circle back to the the other calamities of of this year. Um, oh you know, wow! Yeah, yeah well, yeah, yeah, it's a long list. Yeah, we don't have that much time. Uh, in, in particular, the obviously the, the George Floyd tragedy, but, but also you know a, a to do in, in, in the local music scene was was the kind of the the burst of Me Too uh, stories that came out over the years and. and you built up and, and just kind of finally were unleashed. And, and Molly, you've been a, a musician playing and, you know, been around the boys club for, for years. Um, so let's just kind of talk about, you know, how, how you think the scene ad addressed both of those tragedies and, and, and what can be done going forward. I guess, Matt, as I said, you were uh, really, really up front and center in, in the protests after the George Floyd tragedy. Yep. How, did, how did you kind of see things shaking down in terms of the music scene after that? Uh, yeah, I think they are linked. Everything that's happened in this whole year is linked to each other in a very uh, real way. Mm -hmm. uh, to speak on the George Floyd stuff, as, uh, as far as it re uh, responds to music, I think there has been, it's been twofold. I think that some uh, local stations like Go and even The Current, uh, they were playing more stuff by uh, like conscious black artists trying to just change the conversation, um, increase visibility of some of these artists and their messages. Um, on the ground, you had a lot of artists out on the street um, in the middle of the uprising with the protests, helping out. I mean, like, so with my team, Justice Frontline Aid, when we'd be going out and doing first aid work, there were a lot of people that I would recognize from shows, not just artists, but like people that used to run like the tickets and people that they're like, and they were just out there. They'd be like, they're indeed. I'd be like, oh, hey, what's up? Like, and so like the music community has, because so much of our music talks about justice and change and what's good and what's right. There's a lot of like intersectionality there. Um, so, and there's a lot, I mean, obviously that's like, that's a huge thing that yeah. happened. Yeah. Oh, and then one of the things that I, in my, from my one narrow point of view of it, one of the things that really, how one connects to the other is with George Floyd's murder and the subsequent national attention, you know, Black Lives Matter became super, like I always say it's like super sexy all like yeah. all of a sudden. And so you had a lot of people being like, oh, Black Lives Matter, everyone deserves to be treated with respect, and, and you know, da 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 And then a lot of Black women, specifically, especially in the hip-hop community, um, were looking around at these people who were saying those things and were like, that's really interesting because we don't feel like we're being treated with respect or we're being treated with dignity sure. or, or, or the actions taken upon us on a regular basis are great. And, and, and these women started hearing these things and as it became like a pressure point, you can't hear people talking about justice, truth and equality. And then all of a sudden, you know what I mean? You're just sitting in the background like, but what about all this stuff that you still haven't answered for? So that is when the, the dam burst on that. And I can only, I can really speak for the hip hop community. Cause I, I don't know a whole lot of what's going on in, um, 
like in all the other aspects of the music industry, but especially in the hip hop community, like a lot of like these black women really started speaking out, started talking, other women started speaking out and talking, femme identifying peoples, all of the like came together and started being like, hey, actually, if we're gonna talk about justice, if we're gonna talk about reconciliation and changing the system, we need to talk about the whole system as well. And that's where those two things kind of connected. And then there was a major shift you know, like people were like, hey, being called to task. People were losing their platform. And I think rightfully so. Um, because as even and me and Molly were saying that earlier, art is a gift. Like being able to do that and to say what's in your heart, cre create music and have people pay for that music, that's an honor and a gift. And if you're squandering that opportunity to take advantage of people, then you don't need to be in the position you're in. And so that's kind of how those, at least how I've seen those connect. Yeah, no, right on. That's yeah. great. Yeah, I mean, I think um, as far as, uh, I mean, the, the Me Too movement, that's not a movement. I mean, I've been seeing that on and on. It's just, that's just a Tuesday. Um, yeah. Preach. But yeah, yeah but um, I'm glad that this spotlight is being shown and that people are being held account accountable and um, hopefully giving space to either make amends or change it, do something um, to take control of the situation. So like Auntie's Venue, what an amazing um, uh, project. And for people who are trying to find ways to um, support the good, that's a great venue. That's a great cause right there. Art of the Revolution, Taylor Seberg's project. Um, that's another great grassroots thing that has come out of this of people um, just changing the conversation, changing the perspective, let's say that. Mm -hmm. Like we don't have to look at the same people on the same stage day after day. Here are new voices and yeah. we needed this spotlight to see and hear new voices in the community. Um, so that's a great thing that is going to come out of this. Um, you know, as far as, yeah, the, the Me Too thing, um, I just, I'm, I'm glad that people are being held accountable and it's about time. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. That's yeah. Uh, we, yeah. Let's, for those that don't know, uh, uh, aunties that Molly referred to is, is, uh, a proposed music venue. Uh, it was uh, so Sophia Aris, uh, Lady Midnight, and DJ Keezy, uh, three prominent hip hop artists in town, um, who are going to head up this. They they started a GoFundMe page, which which you can support, and they're they're proposing this music venue. God, uh, it, I mean, it, it'll it'll be a lot of fun, but it'll also be such an important, uh, wonderful thing to to happen. So let, let, let's. Let's hope that's something we can look forward to next year. Um, how do you guys foresee things, all of you, um, being different next year, uh, whether it's in regards to reaction to these calamities or, or just finally when we get out of this damn pandemic, what's going to be different then? Um, either any of you. It's hard, it's hard to, you know, crystal ball, but... Uh, <laughs> I think, well, I honestly, I think people are going to be smarter about how they're going to use their dollars because dollars is how you support and that's how yeah. we speak as a community. So I think we're going to see a shift in, I, I hope that we see a shift in um, that, like how, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, just how are you going to spend your dollars? Where are you going to say it? Because that's where you're using your voice. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think that I well I know that because I, I I've been a part of that at least musically this next crop of albums and music and singles from people are going to be a lot a lot of introspection I think a lot of people looking into the side of themselves there's not a lot of external stimuli for them right now it's just a lot of like so you're going to hear a lot of people talking about some really real stuff um, over the next year. And I think that's super important. I know that there are going to be a lot of voices that have not had a chance to speak, not had a chance to get the limelight, not had a chance to like really shine, being going to be able to have more of those spaces. Um, I'm really looking forward to that as just mm -hmm. as a concept, as more people get a chance to 
have a little bit of the dream that everyone that they've been looking for this whole time. And I don't know. I'd like to think that we get more like the reconciliation gets thrown around a lot, but like, mm -hmm. I think that I would like to think that next year as people have sat in some of the hardships that are outside of their control that they didn't even do. And it's been a, and placed onto them. People will start to empathize with others more. And as we do that, we will start to grow as a more connected community, especially in Minneapolis. I mean, we've had the eye of the entire world on our street corners for the last six months constantly. And I feel like we are, we're going to grow tighter as a unit, like Minneapolis, the Twin Cities, Minnesota as a whole is going to start coming together. And next year, we're going to see a lot more of just being thankful for what we do have. Yeah, I would like, and also I think as uh, venues and as like, um, when I was booking the hook and ladder, there was um, a, a night that I had once a month that was just um, kind of a new band night, um, but just trying to give space to new voices. And I think, and Ashley, I know that First Ave will be the first people to step up on this as well, like to to not just have to book the the same band that we always know is going to draw and they're going to, you know, their crowd's going to drink that much or whatever. But I think it's starting to give, um, you know, a, a broader platform for new voices and taking mm. chances on new, uh, new acts. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that, well, for, you know, for Chris, your original question of like what, what to look forward to or what to expect. I think it's, um, I think we're gonna get like art, incredible art from people. Yeah. It's gonna, yeah. you know, there's like, this is a moment that we're all going through, but I think, you know, people uh, more talented than I, Molly and Matt, you know, will be creating in this moment. And we will, we will, I think there'll just be a flood of really interesting things coming out next year. And I do think that that means there, there are a lot of voices that need space and, and, you know, I, I think that that can and will be available. It has to be, um, which is, is, you know, overdue and exciting. And I think, you know, one of the things that I know that I've been hearing from all over the country are, are conversations like this, you know, venue owners and bookers and talent buyers and agents. I mean, these are conversations that are like actively happening and, and that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I will uh, not to keep plugging Matt, but the um, I'm sure he doesn't mind. But no, no. No. We, we already have seen incredible art come out of this. It's, it's yes, so, yep, it, it really Absolutely. is a remar Thank remarkable you. album. Yeah, that album, um, incredible. Appreciate um, it. Thank you very much. Um, just in in terms of the pandemic, though, um, Ashley, I mean, it, it might uh, any discussion of how it live music will when it when it is ready to return will anything be different will there be there you know, i mean there was talk of of a uh, uh, ticket master live and live, live nation uh requiring people to have proof of a vaccine or something oh wow the the, the, the joke then yeah. was well, if it's live nation there's going to be a four, 14 dollar covid test for <laughs> the ticket uh, but 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 seriously i mean it, it at, at First Ave, has there been discussions on how things might be different in terms of welcoming big crowds? Yeah, I mean, we do expect, you know, some things to be different, especially as as we start, right? I yeah. mean, we'll probably, it, it, it all depends on regulations and what guidelines are and what the CDC is saying and what's safe and not safe. I mean, of course, we're just, we're going to, as we have been, just follow those. But um, it's probably uh, expect a mix of what everyone seems to be calling hybrid shows. So there might be small audiences to start with live streaming options. Um, yep, you know, we're already seeing live streaming happening everywhere, but we're seeing it uh, maybe in the future as you might not be quite shoulder to shoulder or elbow to elbow with people right away when things reopen. There might be fewer physical people in the room, but it's still the option to tune in from home. Um, and then after that, once things like really start opening up, um, it's just, it's going to be so dependent on the guidelines, right? We just yeah. kind of don't know what everything looks like now. Will masks 
be required. Well, if ever, you know, if people have been vaccinated, yes or no. And so we're, we're still sort of waiting to see how some of that plays out. Um, yeah. 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 Also, one thing I know is going to change, which I haven't even, we, me and my band have talked about this a bunch of times is like hand wipes and mm. sanitary <laughs> wipes all the time. We were yep. laughing. I said, I can't tell you how many like <laughs> microphones I just oh, <laughs> without a second thought. Without yeah. a, eight people would have just screamed into it. And I would have been like, oh, cool. Let me put this directly into my mouth. Yeah, I, I imagine there'll be a lot more bands carrying mics with them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we've been. Been just doing live streaming and um, with no audiences right now, and there are there are hand sanitizer stations all over the club, right? Like everywhere you turn, you can like get some hand sanitizer. It's I think that's you know going to be here to stay for a little while. Yeah, just just stay. Stay. I want to get get rid of that couch down in the end. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh no, the, the green room down there, but I. <laughs> Not the cow. It's not the seventh yeah. street entry. Oh, we gotta do that. Um, this is embarrassing. I have to wheel away to grab my charger, so I'm gonna wheel away and then wheel back. Oh, sure, sure, no problem, <laughs> no problem. Uh, well, you, you guys, you musicians, though. I mean, seriously, uh, I would personally be a little nervous about getting on stage at this. You know, when if things are still a little iffy, safety wise, are are you guys? How do you how how do you feel about you know weathering those that initial period of, of getting back on stage with safety protocols. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, if I was in, if I didn't sell guitars, I'd be selling mics right now because I think being in the microphone business is a really great <laughs> option yeah. for people right now. Um, but you know, like, you know, with part of my band, one of my band members lives on a farm and in St. Peter and, um, some of the other folks that I play with have, um, they have concerns with their own loved ones. So nobody's jumping into it as far as um, the people that I'm playing with. Um, I think it's more, it, so I was asked to, so I booked the Como Lakeside Pavilion and the people that I book for um, really were encouraging me to continue the summer series. And I had gotten to the point where I was like, you know what, I'm gonna not, I, I, I resign. Because what happens with musicians is if somebody's playing over there, then all of a sudden everybody's like, well, hey, I gotta play over there and it creates this anxiety. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I'm in no rush because I don't want to create, I don't want that anxiety amongst musicians, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I want to just, I want to play it safe and be creative in performances. Yeah, I am in a similar boat. We are figuring out how the live stream really is, like how it's really going to flow, figuring how to get that to like the level and degree that people would really want to uh, tune into and enjoy. Um, finding different avenues, things people haven't even thought of. It's a, it's the wild, wild west for live music right now, which I think is honestly something really interesting and cool to be a part of. You know, would you know? Do I love singing in front of thousands of people? Of course I do. But and would I rather do that? Yeah. But I would rather everyone get home safe. I'd feel horrible if I put on a huge show and then a bunch of people got sick. Mm -hmm. And then for me, even like I have a band of like I said, we're ten people. If I bring everybody, that's 10 people right there. Just us is the amount of people you can have in a spot. So yeah. it's just like, I don't want to push it and then find ourselves um, regretting it later. So I, I, I'm, I'm having fun with finding out, well, what's the next thing I can do? What's the next way I can put mm -hmm. on a show differently than I did last time that everyone's going to check out because, oh, wow, that's wild. That's what I'm looking forward to. And then when... We can get back on there, and it's safe to do so. I best believe I'm going to be the first one to sign up, but I want to make sure that it's good to go. Yeah, once yeah. Nerdy plays, then I'll play. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just be on the same bill. I'll, same bill. There you go. I, Not I would, I'd love that. Um, you know, and I, I guess, uh, you know, as, as not, neither a musician, uh, very much not a musician. As I suck as a musician, uh, people always ask. Uh, but also not working at the music venue, I, you know, as an outsider somewhat, I, I think, you know, I, when, if it's, if it's 
shows that have to be distanced or, or if there's extra safety protocols required, I think, you, I, I think people are willing to pay more. Yeah. Initially. And, 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 and certainly I, I'm sure all, most musicians and, and, and venues can, can, would appreciate people paying more. So I, I, I hope, uh, and obviously, but then there's, the, but then also there's a lot of people who are in financial straits right now that, um, so I guess. Well, that's I that's like what Ashley said though, too, like yeah. doing the hybrid shows mm -hmm. because, yeah. you know, yeah, you will pay more maybe to go see it live, but then for people who don't have the financial means, then there's another option. And that's a great way to introduce the new audiences. Maybe yes. people have to be at home with their kids and it's, it's, you know, it's not an all ages show. So I think there's a really, there's some really great opportunities here. I got to plug my computer in. As, <laughs> someone, yeah. as somebody who uh, has a lot of like younger <laughs> fans, real talk, that is a big boon. Yeah. That's yeah. one of the things that's been a big boon because, you know, you do an event and you, you do a venue, it's great. You know what I mean? But if it's a 21, 21 up event, like, yeah, you might have another 100, 200 like fans who are 60, mm -hmm. 70 who want to be able to go, but they can't. Yeah. And so having a hybrid show or having like a, a, a mixed thing allows for your, if for, as an artist, that should be something to look forward to because not only will you be able to get people live in front of you, but then it's just like, yo, and then the world gets to watch as well. It's, mm -hmm. it's great overall. So I think that's, a, I'm really looking forward to when those start happening more. Yeah, I think it's a really good opportunity. I mean, I, you know, Chris, I think you're right. People, especially at the beginning, we're all, you know, we all just want to go see a show, but not everyone can maybe mm. pay a higher price. So I think the, the hybrid model is a really good solution for that. And I think it's, you know, like, you know, some people have kids, they couldn't get out even if they wanted to, or some people are too young to get in the venue. I mean, those are great points. Like there, there's sort of, it's a new solution for some of those things. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe some good things. Would, would yeah. <laughs> um, uh, everyone at home, if you guys have questions, kind of this is less less call for questions. Um, I guess somebody did have a question. I don't see it though. Um, creative constraint you've explored in this moment. What is the most interesting creative constraint you've explored in this moment? I guess that's mainly. Ooh. Oh, I'd step up on that. Um, when this first happened, and it was still kind of a, a novel idea, um, Eric Hoskinen put together a Dropbox and introduced, I don't know, like 25 artists to join it. And so people were throwing up demos and just adding to it. And so there was this whole new collaborative effort that, and that happened. And for me, I never recorded at home. And it was great. Like I actually learned how to use GarageBand or whatever the kids use these days. And it was super fun. I mean, so the, for me, that was a, a, a great thing that came out of it. And I think some of the songs he's actually going to use on his next record. And I think some of the other artists that participated in that Dropbox are going to use those songs. So that was awesome. That's cool. That's cool. I think that's, that's very similar. When it first, everything first hit, um, I didn't get, you know, I couldn't go to the studio, like everything was kind of shut down. So the whole project trapped in my room that I made, I literally, I dusted off an old microphone. <laughs> like I, I plugged it in my laptop. I went on a garage band because <laughs> garage bands were at 10. I felt like I was back at my very first mixtape again. And it, <laughs> Even like, you know, it, it was fun. Like it wasn't like the most polished, fancy, you know, thousand, two thousand, three thousand, couple, you know, grand some studio that I was like starting to work into now. But it was like, oh, hey, this, this will feed your spirit. Remember how you started. Remember what made you want to do this in the first place. The, 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 the puzzle of how do I make music with next to nothing, a broke, like an old broken microphone and a laptop computer that wasn't even mine. Like that was my roommate's laptop. So, <laughs> it was so real. And it was, but I loved it. I loved every song that came out of that. I had so much fun. And I, and I think that that was a really fun like puzzle for me to solve. Did your roommate get songwriting credits for? for <laughs> oh, they got a lot of me singing at random times of the day <laughs> but i don't know if that I, I think i still might owe them robin if you're watching this i still owe you at least something for that <laughs> that's great that's great 
Um, you know, and I, not that my, I'm, I get to be creative sometimes and it, it this thing did force me to think outside the box. Mm. So when I, you know, I, 50% of my job at, at the Star Tribune was covering live shows. And, uh, I mean, obviously that, that dried up. So I, you know, I, I did everything from, uh, you know, what to do with all those old CDs collecting dust in your, in the basement, which wound up get, being a huge, getting huge traffic and actually, <laughs> uh, you know, just, just kind of things like that, that I, I probably wouldn't have uh, done otherwise. So, oh, and then I just did the story a couple of weeks ago on noise land, this, you know, the, the that was great. manufacturers in town. And I'd been, I've been wondering for 15 years, what, what, what exactly do they do? And, Lo and behold, it was it was pretty interesting. So, but I'm I'm ready to get back to writing about the real stuff. <laughs> you know, that's one thing I would I do want to speak to is um, like your article about Noiseland. I thought that was great. And one thing that's happening with this whole shutdown is all the folks that work behind the scenes mm -hmm. are the ones that get hurt so much by this. You know, um, roadies and sound people and yeah. light people because they can't do a selfie concert. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right. Um, so those are the folks that it would be great to see some some light on their roles and how important it is and what they do for this community. Real talk. I think that's such yeah. an incredible point. I mean, that's and I know Chris brought up the trust earlier, but the, mm -hmm. the Twin Cities Music Community Trust, um, you know, that there were those were um, sort of grants that were given out. Anyone anyone in the area could apply, but it was not just for musicians. It was, it was actually anyone in the scene in the industry. So it was people who take your tickets, it, it, you know, who runs drinks, someone who, you know, works sound, light, security, exactly. And those people don't have followers. They don't have, you yeah. know, they don't um, have a way to maybe like monetize from home. So I, I think it's, you know, those people behind the scenes who they're the ones, you know, unsung heroes. They, they make Real a lot, of, they make a lot of people look really good and sound really yeah. good all the time. And, and so, yeah, kudos to, to all of those folks. Yeah. Let me, Oh, I'll say one thing. I recently just uh, realized just how much that I was doing a music video shoot. I'd never done something like this before. And the amount that light and sound tech people need to know the amount mm -hmm. of things that they have to do. Like I was just standing around all like jaw dropped. They're just like, Oh yeah, we're going to get this. Da, da, da. And the amount of just knowledge and like, so it's so cool. And so they have, they have, they should get all the respect in the world and do whatever you can to just like, yeah. Cause no one's like, no one's like, Oh, the light guy, what's your at? So like for <laughs> real, for real, like you start doing that in 2020, if you love a show and you really, really enjoy a show, we used to do it in theater all the time. And I feel like we should do it more. Like we point to the with a sound and light crew, we take the time for that applause to be on them in 2021. Like let's make let's go out of our way to do that because I think these people are killing the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and I think I think we really learned the importance of these folks because let's face it, some of the live streams were <laughs> pretty low tech and <laughs> some charmingly so, uh, but. But some were, you know, the guy'd be out, halfway off screen and you couldn't see him and everything. So you yeah. learn real quick. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> like maybe a definitely. lesson for the year, right? Like the people who you think are aren't essential are, you know, it's just yeah. the people that are behind the scenes or not getting recognition a lot of yeah. the time are so essential. Yes. Yeah. 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 And the and again, the the Twin Cities Music Community Trust is a great great way to support those folks. Um. Matt and Molly, I, I mean, uh, uh, how in, until we can buy tickets to your shows again, what what are the best ways for? Not, I mean, not just you guys, but musicians in general. What what are the best ways to support you? Well, uh, let me ask you with the Bandcamp question: Is, oh. is the Bandcamp Fridays? Matt, your stuff's all up on Bandcamp, and Molly, your, your record's up there too. Is that that been one bright thing? Is that is that a good way to to go about buying your records? Or? I, you know, I get a little, I get a little, um, I get a couple of orders. Uh, that's always nice. And I did put this uh, question out to a lot of other musician friends of mine. And at the resounding uh, answer back was go to the websites, their particular websites and buy their merch. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, I, I would say the same. Uh, Bandcamp is great. And the fact mm -hmm. that they've taken a little bit of time to just say, hey, this is going to go 100% to the artist. That's so cool. Uh, and, and I really do appreciate it. And we do see stuff off of there. It's so easy to just talk to the artist now because half the time we're all just waiting at our phones like, <laughs> sitting around. So like, if you want to know how they're going to be best affected or how they're going to get the most out of it, just ask them. A lot of them would just be like, oh, hey, on my website, you can just like get it right from here and that money goes right to me. And then you can see their merch and every click on their website is traffic towards them. Like all of that really does like expand their product. So Bandcamp's great, super awesome. Uh, it's a great tool. Uh, but yeah, definitely check out the artist's page and figure out how you would best uh, help them out. Move away sure. from Spotify, move towards Tidal. <laughs> Tidal, get that get that Tidal money for real. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, and Ashley, uh, ways to support the First Avenue, well, in all, in all clubs. I mean, a lot, a lot of the clubs have gift mm -hmm. cards. Yeah, merch is the resounding answer, I think, for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, buy merch. Support artists merch, support venue merch. You know, if you if you have the ability to do that, that's awesome. Um, I think that's honestly just the most straightforward way. And then of course, like when there are shows or there are live streams, if an artist, especially if an artist is like going live on their own, like tip them. Or yeah. if you paid money for a ticket, but there's an opportunity to tip and you can, but you know, throw them like a couple extra bucks, I think. Those sorts of things really go a long way. But yeah, merch is the best way mm -hmm. to support First Ave and artists right now. Sure, sure. Uh, there's there's one question about how do you find out about local music? Uh, well, re read the Star Tribune. So. There you go. <laughs> oh, with, with City Page is gone, yeah. No, they, no, that is a valid question with City Page is gone because um, th th there is a big void to fill or that needs to be filled. I mean, yeah, we, we try to keep up as best we can with, with – the start to be in, we are covering national stuff too. So, um, uh, but other than that, uh, there isn't, there isn't one catch all site or, I think or look at smaller clubs, calendars, right? Yeah. Like it's really easy to Google music venues and get like 20 lit, you know, 20. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. instead of like local music near me, you're, you're going to get like a really weird, result back from that but if you go google if you google if you google local music venues and look at their calendars and right now is obviously not the best time but you yeah. can go back or um you know you can i i think that's that's a really good way smaller rooms book local sure. talent all the time yeah. sure. jill jill riley's been doing um on the current she's been doing a live stream calendar thursday mornings at 8 50 on mpr yeah. And you know what I use a lot myself to find out about stuff is face the Facebook events are yep. pretty effective if you haven't oh, yeah. face, Facebook yet. Yeah, you can use Facebook events and like just look for events near you that are mm -hmm. music and it'll filter out and you'll see what live streams are happening right now. And and if you have venues that you like, they a lot of them have email lists that you can join. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so they'll just they'll let you know when something's coming right towards you. Mm -hmm. And then um, if you have a band or two or an artist or two that you like, following them on all of their stuff is a very great way to know, both yeah. support them and then also find out where they're going to be. Yeah. Um, you might not find a bunch of new people that way, but if those artists are posting about other artists, which a lot of them do because they're on book bills together, just like and follow everybody you can and you will eventually start getting a list of where these people will be playing. Mm -hmm. Look yeah. up um look up best new bands first avenue and, <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see some alum. Uh, yeah, but I think they're that's another good one. Listen to Radio K. Listen yeah, to really current, the current yeah. Radio K and KFAI. I mean there are there are great stations in town that are supporting local music. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, the best way of discovering new music, though, is to just go out and see it and discover the band that's opening for yeah. the band you want to see. Or there for the opener. I, We've I mean, been that band, and yeah. it's super important. <laughs> sure, sure. Obviously, we can't do that right now, but uh, we will get there eventually. I think that's a good wrap-up point. What do you guys think? Anything else to talk about? Or this is great. Past the hour mark, I think we did pretty good. Um, Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, again, 
support the local scene any way you can. Uh, and and we're gonna we're gonna party like hell next year. That's right, 2021. All right, thanks everyone. Thank, Thank you. you.